بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم صلى الله عليك يا رسول الله صلى الله عليك يا سيدي ويا مولا صلى الله عليك يا سيدي ويا مولاي يا أمير المؤمنين يا رحمة الله الواسعة ويا باب نجاة ويا عبرة كل مؤمن ومؤمنة يا ليتنا كنا معكم سادتي فنفوز فوزا عظيما أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون صلوا على محمد وآل محمد On the eve of the 20th of the holy month of Ramadan on a night like this Amir al-Mu'minin alayhi salam is on his deathbed Imam Ali is spending his final moments gathered around by his family members, his children, his cousins, immediate relatives. They're all surrounding Amir al-Mu'mineen on a night like this, waiting to hear his final words. Amir al-Mu'mineen on his deathbed. Does this mean, does this stop him from sharing his knowledge? Never. Does it mean that he will not share his wisdom? Never. Amir al-Mu'mini until his final moments, till his final moments where he would faint and wake up, faint and come to consciousness, yet he shared his wisdom. He shared his knowledge. Till his final moments he would say, Saluni qabla an tafqiduni. Ask me before you lose me. And his final moments, he was not greedy with his knowledge, nor with his wisdom. Tonight, my dear brothers and sisters, we'd like to recite the will of Imam Ali alayhi salam. His final wasiyah, his final will to his children, specifically to Imam al-Hassan, Imam al Hussein, and the rest of his followers, the rest of his Children, all those who heard his will, Amir al-Mu'mineen, these are his last pieces of advice in this dunya. They're worthy of being discussed. They're worthy of being analyzed. They're worthy of being examined. Although he was in immense pain, you know, the, the sword of Ibn Muljam, it wasn't just a struck on his head. The sword was poisonous. Ibn Muljam had put the sword for three days in poison. For three days it was drenched in poison. The, the man knew what he was doing. And this poison had spread to the entire body of Amir al-Mu'mineen. And as we shall mention in the end, 
His feet had gotten swollen. Imagine, the injury was in the head, but the feet of Amir al-Mu'mineen had swollen from the poison. Yet, despite all of the pain that he was going through, Amir al-Mu'mineen was willing to say his final words and to spread his wisdom in the final hours of his life. The first thing that he says is, أُوصِيكُمَا بِتَقْوَ Allah," And he's speaking specifically this time to Imam al-Hasan and Imam al-Hussein, his two heirs. The two apples of his eyes. The two imams after him. He says, I remind you of having piety of Allah. Azza wa Be pious. Be righteous. This is something that Amir al-Mu'mineen never forgot. Never forgot. Read the sermons of Nahj al-Balagha. Most of them begin with, Usikum بتقوى Allah. I remind you of the piety of Allah. Be pious of Allah. Be righteous. Always. Amir al-Mu'mineen always thought of piety. He lived piety. He, he lived piety. He was, a, he was an embodiment of piety. I advise you and I remind you of being pious of Allah. Be righteous. Be pious. Be God-fearing. Have the fear of Allah. And another hadith in another narration in another sermon or a letter Amir al-Mu'mineen says وَإِنَّمَا هِيَ نَفْسِي أَرُوضُهَا بِالتَّقْوَى لِتَأْتِيَ آمِنَةً يَوْمَ الْفَزَعَ الْأَكْبَرِ It is my soul that I mix it I discipline it with piety with righteousness I ensure that I remain pious Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi salam if Amir al-Mu'mineen ensures he says this and he is sinless, he's immaculate, he's infallible. Then what should you and I say? The Quran says, Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu attaqu allaha haqqa tuqatih. O you who believe, be pious of Allah to the best, the best form of piety. Haqqa tuqatih. When you're pious, give Allah the piety that he deserves from you. Haqqa tuqatih. So many Verses of the Holy Quran remind us of being pious, of showing piety. And then he says, Don't chase after dunya. Even if it chases after you, don't go after dunya. Don't go after dunya. And this was his personal philosophy. Amir al Mu'mini never chased after dunya, he never went after leadership. He did, not, he did not go after Khilafah, although it was his divine right from Allah Azza wa Jal, he did not go after it. He did not raise an army. He did not spill blood to receive leadership and Khilafah. Don't go after dunya. Don't chase dunya. There are some people that chase dunya until their final moments. All they think about is dunya, dunya, dunya. Even if dunya comes after you, you don't go after it. They say about chasing dunya, they say the following story. They say a father kept on insisting on his son to get married, like many fathers do. Get married, my son. I want to see your wedding before I die. I want to see your children before I die. He kept on insisting on his son to get married. So one day the son listens to his father. He, says, he listens to his father's advice and he chooses a young lady and he comes to his father. He tells him, my father, I've listened. I've taken your advice and I found a young lady for marriage and I want you to meet her. I want you to see her. He said, yes, absolutely. He brought the young lady to his father. The father, as soon as he saw the young lady, he said, my son, why are you rushing and marrying? There's no reason to get married. He saw how attractive she was. He said, my son, there's no... Marriage should not be rushed. You don't need to rush into marriage. He said, my father, you were the one t telling me to get married. He said, yes, you know, fathers make mistakes all the time. There's no reason to rush. You know, this young lady, she deserves a man. 
not a young man like you. He deserves amen. The son was extremely upset after his father telling him to get married. Now his father has set eyes on his fiancée. So he goes to a judge. He goes to court and he goes to a judge. And the judge says, the, the son complains about his father to the judge that my father, what do you say about a father that encourages his son to get married and now that he's chosen a wife, he sets his eyes on the young lady. The judge says, I can't be the judge unless I see the young lady and then I could be the judge. So they bring the young lady in the presence of the judge of the court and he said, you know what? It's so shameful for a father and son to be fighting over a young lady. Both of you need to forget about her. This young lady deserves a judge. Not two silly men, a father and a son fighting over a young lady. And so a fight breaks out between the father, the son, and the judge. A physical fight breaks out. The young lady runs. She begins to run. And all three men chase her, the judge, the father, and the son. They chase her. She goes into a forest, and they run after her in the forest. Until there's a ditch, there's a hole in the ground, and all three of them fall one after the other, not seeing properly, they fall in the ditch. The young lady, she comes and stands on top, and she tells them, do you know who I am? No. She says, I'm Dunya, and you've been chasing me. A father fights his son over Dunya, and a son fights his father over Dunya, and People fight each other over dunya until they fall in a hole in the ground and dunya remains. Don't chase after dunya, even if it chases after you. And don't be upset if you ever lose something in dunya, something that you didn't get, a job, a marriage proposal, a marriage opportunity, a chance to move to another state, to another city, to another country. You missed something from dunya. Don't be upset. Don't be upset. This dunya will end at the end of the day. وَلَا تَأْسَفَ عَلَى شَيْءٍ مِنْهَا أي من الدنيا عنكما. You miss something of dunya, it's not the end of the world. It's not a big deal. And this was his personal philosophy as well. This was the personal philosophy of Amin al-Mu'mini. Look at what happened to him. Look at what this ummah did to, did to Amin al-Mu'mini. What did Amin al-Mu'mini do? Cry out in depression. And he was upset. No, خلص. the ummah did not want him. He sat at home. He sat at home. He didn't lead an army. He didn't wage a war. He didn't start a battle. خلص. It is their loss. It wasn't his loss. If you don't get something from dunya, it's not the end of the world. The Quran says, لِكَيْ لَا تَأْسَوْ عَلَى مَا فَاتَكُمْ وَلَا تَفْرَحُوا بِمَا آتَاكُمْ Zuhd is summarized in this sentence. Don't be excited over something that you receive and don't be sad over something you didn't receive in dunya. That is Zuhd. Don't let dunya control you. You control dunya. Don't let dunya own you. You own dunya. That's zuhd. And that was the personal philosophy of Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi salam. We mentioned yesterday that when the Khilafah did not reach Amir al-Mu'mineen, this did not stop him from giving advice. Whenever needed, they would come to him and they needed his advice. In, in dangerous places and very sensitive times, Amir al-Mu'mineen was not greedy. He gave them the advice. Imagine. Imagine if someone steals your car but doesn't know how to use it, they'll come and tell you, show us how to use your car. Show us how it works. Who would do this? For Amir al-Mu'mineen, that's exactly what happened. They took the Khilafah from him and they came and told him, how do we rule? Tell us what do we do? Amir al-Mu'mineen was not greedy. He told them. He was there for them. He gave them the necessary advice. Why? Because for him, it's for the interest of Islam. He doesn't look for personal interests. That's for the interests of Islam. He says, وَاللَّهِ لَأَسْلِمَنْ مَا سَلَمَتْ بِهِ 
أمور المسلمين ولم يكن فيه جور إلا علي خاصة as long as the oppression is on me only and not on Islam I'm safe I'm fine and in another sermon he says فما راعني إلا انثيال الناس على فلان يبايعونه فأمسكت يدي حتى رأيت راجعة الناس قد رجعت عن الإسلام he says people went and they gave their allegiance to Fulan, meaning Abu Bakr. And I remained at home, I remained at peace, I remained calm, and I didn't do anything until I saw that Islam is in danger. People began reverting back to Kuf, back to Shirk. Here I had to stand up, I had to support Islam. Yad'una. إلى محق دين محمد صلى الله عليه وآله فخشيت إن لم أنصر الإسلام وأهله أن أرى فيه ثلما أو هدما تكون المصيبة به علي أعظم من فوت ولايتكم He says there were two tragedies and one tragedy was bigger than the other One tragedy was that I lost my right to خلافة The bigger tragedy was that Islam was at stake Islam was in danger and for me Islam being in danger was a greater tragedy than for me to lose Khilafah. And hence I came and I supported. I came and I supported them. I stood with the government if it was for the interest of Islam to save and rescue Islam. Amir al had no problem. Muhammad wa Muhammad. And then he says, وَقُولَ bilhaq And speak the truth. Say the truth. Speak the truth. وَقُولَ بالحق. Never be afraid of speaking the truth. Never. As long as you're saying the truth and speaking the truth, you have nothing to fear. And this was the personal philosophy of Amir al-Mu'minin alayhi salam. Rasulullah would say, عَلِيُّ مَعَ الْحَقِّ وَالْحَقُّ مَعَ عَلِي يَدُورُ مَعَهُ أَيْنَمَا دَار Amir al-Mu'minin alayhi salam Always spoke the truth, even, it's, even if it's not the popular thing to say. And this is very sensitive. When speaking the truth is not popular, it can make you unpopular. Here's the test. Here's the challenge. When you go ahead and speak the truth, even if you will offend certain individuals, friends, acquaintances, but you're speaking the truth. This is what Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi salam taught us. And this is what we learned from his life. He would say, "Ma min sadiq." The truth did not leave me any friends because Amir al-Mu'minin was never pol politically correct. He was never afraid of offending anyone. He spoke the truth, no matter what it was, no matter who it offended. Waqula bil haq. Amir al-Mu'minin alayhi salam. They told him that the cousin of Uthman ibn Affan, when Uthman was, was the head of state, they told him his cousin Al-Walid, the governor of Kufa, is an alcoholic. He drinks in public. And one day he drank so much and he came for Salat al-Fajr. The governor would, leave, would lead Salah. He drank so much. He came for Salat al-Subh. Instead of praying two units, he, he prayed 12 and then he turned around and he said, if you want more, I could do more. And then he vomited in the masjid, in the mihrab. He vomited. They were able to take his ring, which is his stamp. You know, your ring back then was very important because it's your stamp. They took his ring and they came to Medina, to Uthman. They told him, look at what your governor is doing. Look at what your governor is doing. He said, Uthman did not punish his cousin because it's his cousin. He didn't punish him. Amir al-Mu'minin said, bring me al-Walid. Bring me. Amir al-Mu'minin took a whip and he started chasing after al-Walid. Al-Walid would run and Amir al-Mu'minin runs after him until he stopped him and he whipped him as he deserves. This is haq. It's truth. Even if it's the cousin of the Khalifa, even if it might get him in trouble, but this is the truth. Amir al-Mu'minin was not afraid. He would not flatter. He was not known to flatter anyone or please anyone other than Allah Azza wa Jal. وَقُولَ لِلْحَقِّ وَعْمَلَ لِلْأَجْرِ Do good for the reward, for the sake of the reward. 
He would tell Imam al Hassan and Imam al Hussein, do good for the sake of their reward, not for the sake of praise, not for the sake of flattery, not for the sake of your name being mentioned and praised. No, do it for the sake of reward, for the sake of Allah Azza wa Jal. Not, not for worldly reasons, not to gain something in dunya, but to, get, to gain a reward in akhirah. And this was the life of Amir al Mu'mineen. All that he did. From the moment that he was born till the moment that he left, it was for ajr, for tawab, for seeking the satisfaction of Allah. Not to, see the, not to seek the satisfaction of people and human beings. Done at all. Amir al-Mu'mineen sought the satisfaction of Allah. Before the month of Ramadan, when Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi, he gave his famous sermon, Ayyuhan nas, annahu qad aqbal alaykum shahrullah. The famous sermon, at the end of the sermon, you see, the masjid was full of sahaba. But look at how everyone else thinks and how Amir al-Mu'mineen thinks. Amir al-Mu'mineen's question was, Ya Rasulullah, what is the best deed in the month of Ramadan? What gives me the most amount of reward? You see, Amir al-Mu'mineen takes advantage of the month of Ramadan. He wants to benefit from the month of Ramadan. Get a maximum amount of reward as possible. He says, ما أفضل الأعمال في هذا الشهر يا رسول الله. What is the best of deeds in this month? أمير المؤمنين. رسول الله تعظم يا أبا الحسن. أفضل الأعمال في هذا الش في هذا الشهر الورع عن محارم الله عز وجل. The best of deeds, the most high, the highest rewarding deed in this month is to refrain from the sins, to refrain from sinning and committing sins and transgressions against Allah. Azzawajal, and then he says, Wakuna Lilvalimi Khasman Walil Madlumi Auna. Stand against the oppressor. He tells his sons, Al Hassan al Hussein, stand against the oppressor. Kuna Lilvalimi Khasman. Any oppressor at any time, at any place, be his enemy. Stand in his face. Be his counterpart. Stand in, in, in his face. And oppose him. Kuna Lilvalimi Khasman. Stand with the oppressed. Stand with them. Show your sympathy to them. Show your solidarity to the oppressed. No matter who they are or where they are or who is oppressing them. Today, my dear brothers and sisters, we learn from Amir al mumini Today, there is oppressed people around the world and specifically, specifically in Gaza. We've seen what has been taking place in the past five or six months from October 7th until now. You know these people, the people of Gaza, they live in a, in a small but open prison. It's a small but open prison. For how many years? For how many years do they have to deal with this oppression? Oppression, humiliation. They said enough is enough. Until today. Until today they're being bombarded every day. As I speak right now, they're dropping them bombs. And where do they get the bombs? Where does Israel get these bombs from? From us, from our countries, here, from the West, from the West, from the US, from European countries. And these cowards don't have the audacity to mention the word ceasefire. Ceasefire. They can't tell the word ceasefire to the face of Israel. This is oppression. Instead of siding with the oppressed, they side with the oppressor. Amir Mumin teaches us otherwise. Wakuna Lilvalimi Khasman Walil Madlumi Auna. Amir Mu'minin himself he would say, Adhalilu Indi Aziz Hatta Ahud al Hakula. The oppressed is strong. With me he is strong until I take his right for him. Wal Kawiyu Indi Laif Hatta Ahud al Hak Hatta Ahud al Hakka Min. And the strong with me he's weak. Until I take the rights from him and give it to the rightful owners. Amir Mumin Ali Salam doesn't judge based upon who's strong and who's weak. If you're a strong government, I will side with you. If you have oil, if you're purchasing weapons from me, if you're making my economy strong, I will stand with you and I will stand against your enemies. Amir Mumin did not have such principles. Amir Mumin was principled. He was principled. He would stand with the weak. With the oppressed, the oppressors had no standing with Amir al-Mu'minin 
And then he says, أُوصِيكُمَا الْحَسَنُ وَالْحُسَيْنِ وَجَمِيعُ وَلْدِي وَأَهْلِي I remind you and all of my children and all of my family members وَمَنْ بَلَغَهُ كِتَابِ بِتَقْوَى اللَّهِ وَنَظْمِ أَمْرِكُمْ Again, Amir al-Mu'mineen reminds his children of having piety, of showing piety and being pious وَنَظْمِ أَمْرِكُمْ and to be organized. 14 centuries ago, Amir al-Mu'mineen encourages us to be organized. Be organized. And he's advising a nation that is least organized. We Muslims are the least organized. Look at where we are today. Look at where we are politically, economically, what we have. Look at other minorities here in Canada, in the United States, in Europe. Look at all other minorities. They have their rights. They're organized. They're politically active. No one dares speak about them. No one dares to hinge on their rights. But us, us Muslims, we're like you know, a doorstep. Everyone comes and, and takes a step on us. Everyone comes and humiliates us. Everyone comes and disrespects us. Why? Because we're not organized. We allow them to. We allow them to disrespect us. We allow them to take our rights because we didn't stand. We didn't stand up for ourselves. We're not organized. Our organizations are not organized. We hold simple majalis, a simple conference, and we think we've done something big. Of course, may Allah bless the brothers and sisters, the new generation, the new generation who are, who are organized. I'm speaking of, of the older generation. The older generation who are still not organized, our young brothers and sisters, the majalis that they hold and the conferences, they're doing a fantastic job. But we need more. We need more. We need to be organized. Be organized in what you do. Stand together. Be united. Don't be divided. Don't backstab one another. Don't work against one another. Don't compete against one another. I wish Abiyah al-Mu'mineen was alive today and to see the things that we do to each other, how we undermine each other and disrespect one another and work against each other and compete against each other. وَنَظْمِ أَمْرِكُمْ وَصَلَاحُ ذَاتِ الْبَيْنِ And I remind you and I encourage you of fixing people's problems. You see two people, two families, two individuals, two sisters, two brothers that don't speak to each other Fix them. Bring them together. وَصَلَاحُ ذَاتِ الْبَيْنِ فَإِنِّي سَمِعْتُ جَدَّكُمَا صلى الله عليه وآله يقول صَلَاحُ ذَاتِ الْبَيْنِ أَفْضَلُ مِنْ عَامَّةِ الصَّلَاةِ وَالصِّيَامِ I heard your grandfather say that fixing between two mu'mineen, two brothers, two sisters, two family members, two members of the community that don't speak, that have boycotted each other, that don't speak, bring them together, this is more valuable and more rewarding than all recommended prayers and fasting. Except, of course, wajibat. Wajib fasting and praying is something else. But recommended prayers and fa'amat as-salatu wa siyam bringing between two people and fixing their problem is more rewarding. It is more fruitful. If you know of two individuals that don't speak, Go tonight after the majlis, get them together. Get them together. You're allowed to bring them together. And you're allowed to lie, by the way. Lying is forbidden except in aslah, when you bring two people together. You can go to one person and say, I heard the other praise you, mention you in a good way. You go to the other person and you tell them the same. With the intention of bringing them closer, you're allowed even to lie. This is the only exception to lying. The only exception. To bring two people together. And then he says, Allah, Allah, fil aytam. Take care of orphans. Make sure that orphans are not left without a sponsor, without a supporter. And this was his philosophy. This was how Amir al Mu'minin lived to the point that he was called Abu al Aramili wal Aytam, the father of widows and orphans. One day, Amir al Mu'minin brought food for a family of orphans. Their father had died in the battle of Safin. 
And one of the children kept on crying. One of the children kept on crying. Amir al-Mumineen asked him, why are you crying? He said, because when I go out in the street to play with the children, the children say, you don't have a father. You don't have a father. You're an orphan. Amir al-Mumineen says, yes, but go tell them that Ali ibn Abi Talib is my father. I have the best of fathers. Ali, Ali ibn Abi Talib is my father. The child kept on crying, couldn't settle. So Amir al-Mu'mineen told him, what's wrong? He said, the neighbors have a wooden horse. They have a toy, a wooden horse that they're playing with. Amir al-Mu'mineen went and spoke to the neighbors and he brought them the wooden horse. He said, no, I want a horse. I want a horse to play with. Amir al-Mu'mineen knelt. He got on his knees and on his hands and he said, I will be a horse for you. Get on my back. And the child got on the back of Amir al-Mu'mineen and played until he fell asleep. This was Amir al-Mu'mineen. The sight of orphans would break his heart. He was the father of, of orphans. There's a narrator. He says that I was, in, I believe, in Masjid al-Haram during tawaf. I saw two young ladies speaking to one another and one of them swears by Amir al-Mu'mineen Ali ibn Abi Talib. I said, subhanallah, how, how does she know Ali ibn Abi Talib? I went to her. I told her, do you know who this man is? She said, of course. He's been to our house. He said, Ali ibn Abi Talib. She said, yes. He's been to my house. He's been to our house. She said, my father died in a battle, in the battle of Safin. So he came to visit our house. He came to my mother and, she, and he asked her, Kayfa asbahti ya umm al -aytam? How are you? And how do you feel, O oh mother of orphans? She said, Bikhair, Bikhair, Nahnu Bihimak. We are under your protection, Ya Amir al Mu'mineen. As long as we're under your protection, we're fine, we're safe. Alhamdulillah. And then my mother, she brought me. I was a child and I couldn't see. I had lost my eyesight. I had a disease that I, it made me lose my eyesight. She said when Amir al-Mu'mineen saw me, he began to weep and he began to cry and he recited these verses of poetry. مَا إِن تَأَوَّحْتُ مِنْ شَيْءٍ رُؤْزِئْتُ بِهِ كَمَا تَأَوَّحْتُ لِلْأَيْتَامِ فِي الصِّغَرِ قَدْ مَا تَوَالِدُهُمْ مَنْ كَانَ يَكْفُلُهُمْ فِي النَّائِبَاتِ وَفِي الْأَسْفَارِ وَالْحَضَرِ and then Amir al-Mu'mineen touched my eyes and I received my eyesight once again. And here I stand in front of you and I swear by Ali ibn Abi Talib. This was Amir al-Mu'mineen. Al-Thani, Allah. And then he says, well, Allah, Allah fi jiranikum. Take care of your neighbors. Your neighbors, your next door neighbor, people on your street, go show them your akhlaq, the akhlaq of Islam, the akhlaq of Ahlul Bayt. A few days ago, I was in Toronto. A brother, a Canadian brother by the name of Mark Davidson, he came to the masjid and he said that I just accepted Islam and I've been fasting. It was maybe the 12th day of Ramadan. He said, I've been fasting the entire month of Ramadan and I'd like to learn more about Islam. I asked him, how did you become a Muslim? What got you interested in Islam? He said, Sayyid, I have Iraqi neighbors. They're from Iraq and they've been so kind to me, especially with food. Every once in a while, they bring me food. They ask about me. None of my other neighbors, they ask about me, but these Iraqi neighbors, they ask about me. So I got to know them and I discovered that they're Muslim and they're followers of Ahl Bayt and I decided to embrace the school of thought they believe in. Because of the akhlaq of their neighbors, this man became a Muslim. What you could do for your neighbors, you could do more than preachers. You can preach to them through your akhlaq by asking about them, being kind to your neighbors. Allah, Allah fil Quran, la yasbiqakum bil amali bihi ghayrukum. Take care of your Quran, Amir al Mu'minin says. Take care of your Quran. How is our relationship to the Quran? How often do we read the Quran? Is it just in the month of Ramadan? And we neglect the Quran all the other times after. Do we try to understand the verses that we read, contemplate over it? 
We have a lot of lacking when it comes to the Quran, my dear brothers and sisters. It's tafsir, it's translations, it's commentary. There's so much that we need to do for Quran. Allah, Allah, fi salah, fa innaha amudu dinikum. Allah, Allah, fi bayti rabbikum. La takhluh ma baqitum. Allah, Allah, fi jihad bi amwalikum. Wa anfusikum. Wa al sinatikum fi sabirillah. He says, take care of jihad. And what's interesting is that he begins with your money first. Allah, Allah, bi amwalikum wa anfusikum. The first step of jihad is you pay. Is you pay. You support. You support. You support Islam through your wealth. If you couldn't, then with your souls. Allah, Allah, fil jihad bi amwalikum. And tonight, my dear brothers and sisters, we have a fundraiser coming up after the lecture. This is your jihad. Your jihad is to support your local organizations, this youth organization, with your wealth, with money. This is jihad. This is not just sadaqah. This is jihad. Because you're supporting Islam. You're supporting these Islamic events. You're helping our youth be guided towards Islam. And other youth will join, inshallah. وَعَلَيْكُمْ بِالتَّوَاصُلِ وَالتَّبَادُلِ وَإِيَّاكُمْ وَالتَّدَابُرُ وَالتَّقَاطُعُ Connect with one another. Visit each other. Ask about one another. Don't boycott each other. Don't disconnect from each other. وَلَا تَتْرُكُ الْأَمْرَ بِالْمَعْرُوفُ وَالنَّهِي عَنِ الْمُنْكَرِ فَيُوَلَّى عَلَيْكُمْ شَرَارُكُمْ ثُمَّ تَدْعُونَ فَلَا يُسْتَجَابُ لَكُمْ Enjoy the good. Forbid the evil. Because if you neglect these two obligations, the worst of you will be will have authority over you and you'll be, and you will pray against them but Allah will not answer and then he says ya bani abd muttalib la alfiyannakum takhuduna fi dima' almuslimin khawda i do not want you to spill o oh, the children of abd muttalib he's, he's speaking to his family members do not spill the blood of other muslims taquluna qutila amir almu'minin you say that ali ibn abi talib was killed we shall seek Vengeance, no. You have no right other than to kill my own murderer. That's it. You will, if I died, you have the right to strike him once and hit him once with a sword because he only hit me once. And do not cut him into pieces. Do not. Dismember his corpse. فَإِنِّي سَمِعْتُ رَسُولَ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَآلِهِ يَقُولُ إِيَّاكُمْ وَالْمُثْلَ وَلَوْ بِالْكَلْبِ الْعَقُورِ I heard Rasool Allah state that do not cut, do not dismember any corpse even if it's a dog. Amir al-Mu'mineen is in his final moments. Al-Asbagh ibn Nubata says that I came to visit Amir al-Mu'mineen on the night of his martyrdom, Amir al-Mu'mineen fell, I will come back to Al-Asbaq ibn Nubata, Amir al-Mu'mineen fell in his mihrab. The moment that he was struck, he fell in his mihrab. Fustu wa rabbil ka'ba. Amir al-Mu'mineen tried to get up and lead salah, but he couldn't. Imam al-Hassan tells him, my father, rest, and I will lead salah. He asked Imam al-Hassan to lead salah. Imam al-Hassan led salah to subh and then himself and Imam Hussein and the rest of the brothers, they carry Amir al muminin back to the house. He did not have the ability to walk. When they reached close to the house, Amir al muminin alayhi salam told Al-Hasan wal Hussein and the others that were carrying him, he told them, now put me on the ground. I want to walk to my house. They told him, why, Ya Amir al muminin you do not have the ability to walk. He said, I do not want Zainab to see me being carried. She will be in shock. She will be hurt. Let Zainab see me walking on my feet. Amir al muminin comes into his house. They put him on his bed. Al-Asbaq ibn Nubata said that I came to visit Amir al muminin Amir al muminin was wearing a yellow turban. He says, Wallah, la a'lam ayyuma ashaddu sufratan al-imam am wajhuhu. I was, I am not sure which one is more yellow, which one is more pale. His face 
or his turban. Amir al-Mu'mineen kept on fainting and coming back to consciousness. Al-Asbaq ibn Nubata said, I started weeping. I started crying. Amir al-Mu'mineen woke up. He saw me crying. He said, Ya Asbagh, la tabki fa'innaha wallah al-jannah. Don't cry, Ya Asbagh, for by God it is paradise. It is heaven. He said, Qultu Ya Amir al-Mu'mineen, a'lamu dhalik. I know that you're going to heaven. Then why are you crying? وَإِنَّمَا أَبْكِي عَلَىٰ فِرَاقِكِ I am only crying because you're leaving us, Ya Amir al-Mu'mineen. You will be departing. Who will look after us? Who is our Imam after you? We will lose our Imam, Ya Amir al-Mu'mineen. We're crying for your departure. We're your orphans. It was during this night that a doctor comes to visit Amir al-Mu'mineen. He investigates the injury in the head of Amir al-Mu'mineen. And then he, says, he gives the bad news to Amir al-Mu'mineen. Amir al-Mu'mineen kept on <laughs> sweating and his feet had swollen from the injury. The poison had rushed through his entire body reaching his feet. The doctor told Amir al-Mu'mineen, أَحَدْ عَهْدَكَ وَأُوصِي وَصِيَّتَكَ فَإِنَّ عَدُوَ اللَّهِ ضَرْبَتُهُ قَدْ وَصَلَتْ إِلَىٰ أُمِّ رَأْسِكَ Ya Amir al-Mu'mineen, say your farewell, say your final will, for the poison has reached your brain, Ya Amir al-Mu'mineen, meaning that you only have a couple of hours to live. And then the doctor suggested that Amir al-Mu'mineen drinks milk to reduce the pain of the poison. News reaches out in the streets of Kufa that Amir al-Mu'mineen wants to drink milk. The orphans of Kufa, they gather at the doorstep of Amir al-Mu'mineen all carrying with them milk saying this is for our father Ali ibn Abi Talib all of them were carrying boxes of boxes of milk one of the orphans after giving his milk to be given to Amir al-Mu'mineen he said you took my milk to my master now give us my father let our father come out let us see him Abu al-Aramili wal aytam the orphans of Kufa tonight were very sad. They're about to lose their father, their loving, passionate father, Ali ibn Abi Talib. Amir al Mu'minin, all he could think about was the orphans, the orphans of Kufa, the orphans of the Mu'minin. I say, my master, Sayyidi, Ya Amir al Mu'minin. أين أنت عن أيتام الحسين Where were you on the eve of the 11th of Muharram on the day of Ashura in Karbala to see your own orphans running from tent to tent not being given water shouting العطش العطش These were your orphans يا أمير المؤمنين on the day of Ashura, after the massacre of all the men and all the young men, Umar ibn Sa'd orders water to be given to the orphans and to the children. They all refuse to take water. They would say, How do you expect us to take water when you massacred our fathers thirsty? Except one child, one orphan. She took the water, but she did not drink. Everyone wanted to see what, she, what will she do with the water. They saw her enter the battleground and go from body to body, from one headless body to another headless body until she arrived at the body of her father. She sat next to him, Abaya Hussein. My dear father Hussein, the water is ready. Get up and drink. Go, 
والحسين الترب أصبح فراشا وكأني بالعقيلة زينب خويا أنا تحيرت والله بيتامك بيتامك خويا أنا مالي حيل فرقك هاي تصيح عم وين عمي وذيك تصيح فارقني ابن أمي لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم إنا لله وإنا إليه راجعون نسألك اللهم وندعوك باسمك العلي الأعظم ألا عز الأجل الأكرم يا الله اللهم لا تدع لنا ذنبا إلا غفرته ولا هما إلا فرجته ولا عيبا إلا سترته ولا خوفا إلا منته ولا رزقا إلا بسطته ولا شملا إلا جمعته ولا مرضا إلا شفيته ولا غائبا إلا حفظته وأدنيته ولا حاجة من حوائج الدنيا والآخرة لك فيها رضا ولنا فيها صلاح إلا قضيتها ويسرتها يا أرحم الراحمين ولأرواح المؤمنين والمؤمنات والعلماء والشهداء نقرأ سورة الفاتحة مع الصلوات